Well, it's that time of the month again. No, not that time of the month, you dirty bastards. Time to change the oil. Alright, what's up you guys, Carter here from Part Time Overland. In all seriousness, today I'm going to be showing you how to change the oil on your 3rd gen 4Runner. Now, there's a lot of different ways to change the oil on this thing. There's no totally correct way, but I've done this dozens and dozens of times, and this is the best way I've found. So, without further ado, here is the Part Time Overland method. Now, the nice part about having a lifted truck is you don't actually need to go on stands to change the oil. However, it makes it a hell of a lot easier, there's a lot more room, so we're going to go on stands since we have them. Also, this is technically an optional step, but it's a really good idea to just warm up the engine for at least about 10 minutes and getting it up to about operating temperature. It doesn't have to be all the way hot, but it'll just help the oil flow out a lot easier and quicker. Now, normally because this is a lifted vehicle, I'll use some sort of step stool or something like that, but today I only found this ladder laying around, so we're going overkill method. Once our hood is open, it's time to undo the oil cap. I always like doing this as a first step, it really helps the oil drain a lot quicker once our drain bolt is undone. We can then move down to the bottom of the vehicle where we will remove our skid plates. If you have a stock 4Runner, these should all be 12mm bolts. In my case, I have a front differential drop kit, so a couple of these are going to be 13mm or half inch. Now, I know I look like a bit of a monkey as I do this, but as I'm taking this last bolt out, I'm going to be holding the end of the skid plate with my foot, and so it doesn't follow me, then I can slowly lower it with my hands and safely put it on the ground. Now, if you're an off-roader like me, chances are your undercarriage is probably super, super dirty. I just got back from Moab a few weeks ago, so everything is super, super dirty, and now is a good time to take care of that. And after a few minutes of pressure washing, that's looking a whole lot better. So, time to get back to the oil change. Using a 14mm socket, I'm going to crack the drain bolt and then do the rest by hand. Now one quick tip that I like to use is to hold the oil pan a bit closer to the drain plug and that way it prevents some of that oil from splattering everywhere. And would you just take a look at that nice coffee. Yummy yum yum. Now, I normally like to give the oil a little bit of time to drain, so I'll typically eat some lunch or something, but in this case, my skid plate was a bit dinged up, so I took the opportunity to give it a fresh coat of paint. As you can see, I'm using some Rust-Oleum Satin Enamel. I actually picked this up as a quick tip from Speedy's Garage when he did some rust restoration. This stuff works really, really well and comes out as a super nice finish, so thank you, Speedy. And as you can see, with only a couple quick coats, this thing is looking almost brand new again. At this point, all of the oil should be drained out and we are ready to replace the drain bolt. One thing to check for is that your crush washer hasn't stuck to the oil pan like it has in my case. If it has, it's no big deal. You'll just need to find some screwdriver or some tool, pry it off so that the new one can seat on there nicely. Then we can clean off the drain plug, install a new crush washer, and thread that puppy back in by hand. In case some of you are curious, the torque spec for this on the year 2000 is 29 foot-pounds, but I never really do that. I always just snug it down with this ratchet and I've never had an issue. The most important thing is don't go too tight and strip these threads out, otherwise it's going to be a very, very bad day. With our drain bolt back in, we can now tackle the oil filter. Now there's a couple different ways of doing this. You can actually access it from the top. Some people even go through the side, through this little dust guard, but since we're removing the skid plates anyway, I always just reach my hand through this and I find this is really the easiest way, as long as you don't have Hulk arms. I always like to do this part nice and easy as well, just because as you can see here, sometimes it gets a little bit splashy. Luckily here I was able to catch most of the splashes, but it can be a little bit messy if you're not careful. With the old filter out, it's time to put the new one in. As you can see here, I'm using the Wix XP. I usually get this from O'Reilly's and I've always had great luck with this, so no reason to go with anything else. This step isn't totally necessary, but I do like to pre-lube this filter before I put it back in and hand tighten it down. 
Now, as I just mentioned, you can see I'm only using my hands to tighten this down. I have seen some people use wrenches on it, and while it can work, it can also be very tricky to get this off the next time you do a change if you've over tightened it. I've never had a filter come loose after hand tightening it, so in my opinion, that's the quickest, easiest, and simplest way to do it. At this point, I like to use some brake cleaner to degrease the mess I just made, and you can use some paper towels too, and then it's time to move up top and put some new oil back in. Here's my oil of choice. As you can see, it's a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic 5W30. It doesn't really matter what brand you go with as long as you stick with the same brand, and I personally recommend you go with Full Synthetic. Now comes the trickiest part of the whole job, trying not to spill this stuff, and we are good. No drop spilled. Now, although technically the owner's manual calls for five and a half quarts of oil, I usually find that the forerunner sits happier with closer to six quarts. So I'm putting in that extra quart now. If you want to, you can check the dipstick afterwards, but I've done this so many times now, I usually just throw in six and call it good. While we're at it, I'm just gonna clean up the cap real quick, swap it out for the funnel, and check out how nice it looks in the engine bay. Before we put those skid plates back on, I'm just going to pour the old oil back into one of these big 5 quart containers. And additionally, if you have any extra unused oil, I'm just going to pour that into one of these small 1 quart containers. I always like to keep one in the vehicle at all times in case of emergency. And finally, we can go back to installing our brand new looking skid plate. I always like to mount this with the front on first. It actually has these three little hooks so it'll kind of hold itself there. And then I'll go ahead and install one of the rearmost bolts first. Once it's hanging there by itself and secure, then I can go ahead and reinstall all the remaining bolts. Finally, I like to keep a logbook of all the maintenance items I do to this truck, so I'm just going to quickly write that in with the date, the filter, the type of oil I use, and that's just super nice for me to look back on as well as any future owners if I ever decide to sell this truck. And last but not least, we can give her a quick start and see how she's running. And no surprises here, as most Toyotas do, she's running like a top. Well guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If it helped you, make sure to give it a big like and also comment down below if I missed anything. Also, if you're interested in checking out any of the other content, I have a lot of tutorials as well as adventure videos coming up like this. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see more third gen 4Runner content. And I can't wait to see you guys next time back on the trails.